What's going on guys? Stevie from the Minute Masters here and today I'm going to show you how to install a larger amp alternator. So as most of you guys know, your vehicles run a lot of electrical components and so in order to power those you have a battery. And we know batteries, if they're not charged, they drain and well, that would become a very expensive thing if you're just tossing batteries away every time you drain them down. So all vehicles come equipped with an alternator. Now, what if you're pulling more electricity out of that battery than the alternator can charge? Well, that's when you need to upgrade to a larger amp alternator. So right here, I have my original alternator right here and I have the upgraded version right here. Now, from 93 to about 95, there are the G3 alternators and they come in a different case size which is I believe measured from bracket to bracket and it's like you know seven and some change to like eight and a quarter or something like that so I have the smaller case here and I bought their smaller case upgrade so this is a 95 amp g3 alternator and this is a 130 amp g3 alternator you can tell the difference this is four cooling holes right here and this is two large ones okay that's probably the only difference between the two other than their output. The modification is plug and play. So what does that mean? You're just gonna end up undoing these three bolts under your electrical connections, pull off your belt, put the new one in, reattach everything, and you're good to go. Now, a little disclaimer here, okay? I'm told and research and so on and so forth that if you go to a higher amp alternator, you're gonna want to increase the charging cable going to the battery. So the cable that comes off of your alternator that then connects to your battery, they say you may want to increase the size of that to compensate for the extra amperage the thing is able to uh, create, okay? And then of course, a mega fuse. From what I've read, unless you're powering an entire system, you're probably good for now. I don't have anything really on the vehicle at the moment. This is just an upgrade because I hate seeing the needle dip every time I run the air conditioning and the lights and everything at the same time. So probably not a huge problem for me, but if you run subs, extra lights, and all other goodies, you may wanna look into that. Otherwise, let's get started here. So the first thing I'm gonna to wanna to do here is I'm gonna to wanna to disconnect the belt, okay? Now you may have noticed this pulley is just slightly smaller than this one. Again, the research and what I've heard the smaller pulley allows this thing to generate more power because it makes more revolutions per minute as opposed to a large one. Apparently that's just pure and simple physics. Okay, so we're gonna leave that on there. It should be enough tension in the belt to handle it. And of course, if it creates a problem, then we just downsize the belt. But what you wanna do is take the tension off the belt. So this is your tensioner pulley right here. You wanna put a socket and um, a breaker bar or anything on there, and you're gonna wanna pull it over and relieve the tension, and that way we can pull the belt off. So I'm gonna get my setup, uh, myself set up to do that, and I'll kind of show you how that works. All right, so I got myself set up to do a one-handed here. So you can see I have my Kinepex pliers wrench on the tensioner pulley right there, and I'm just gonna pull this over, right? And you can see the slack will come out, okay? And then you just slip the belt off, and you're ready to start taking your alternator off. Next up is your two electrical connectors. So you have this one here and this one. So with a screwdriver, just gingerly pry back here on that tab. I've already done that because it's impossible to do one-handed. And you just give it a pull there. Okay, so that one's off. And then of course, there's this one attached to it. I already kind of preset that one. Same deal, you'll want to go after the tab on there on the side. As you can see, mine is actually cracked, okay? So that's what you're just trying to avoid. It's no big deal, but as you can see, it's mostly intact, okay? So then around the back side here, you'll notice this orange cap here, okay? So you just pull that off, okay? And you will see that there is a nut on the back there. You'll wanna take that nut off, and now you've fully disconnected your alternator from your electrical system. All right, so, um, just a little reminder, we are working on an electrical system, so you do want to disconnect the negative side of your battery and make sure it doesn't touch. Okay, that way we uh, reduce the risk of shocks and all kinds of other things. Now, I've decided to leave this one connector on. It's in kind of a bad spot for me. 
and I don't have my full arsenal of tools here because I'm not at the garage. So again, more than one way to do this. I'm actually gonna disconnect the whole case itself and then I'll be able to get that at my leisure when it's up here right in front of me. So then is the next part. You're gonna take this. Now it just happens to be a half inch for me and you're gonna undo this bolt, that bolt, and that bolt and now your whole alternator will come right off. So as you can see, the old alternator is gone. I have it right over there. And our space is open for our new one. So in <clears throat> the uninstall is the same as the install. The install is the same as the uninstall. So all you're gonna have to do is put the new alternator back by just placing over those holes, putting your bolts back, okay? Now, like I said, just to give myself a little more space for this, the charging wire here, I'm going to attach the charging wire, wire first and then I'm gonna bolt the alternator up and then I'll plug in these two connectors and make it easy on me and then uh, put the belt on. So I'm gonna start putting everything back and I'll bring you back to see the finished product. So here we are guys, a brand new factory upgrade, I might say, 130 amp alternator. And yes, remember it's a G3, has the two larger holes. Man, does it look good. I love shiny new parts, but hey, don't we all? So a couple things to note, I decided to give you some footage of me installing this and you can see it was just the three bolts. And then of course the two electrical connectors, I decided to put the charging cable on off camera, just a little easier when it's you're not reaching behind there with um, an actual wrench. If I had my other socket set with me, I'd probably just do it on the back side. And then of course I added the belt as well off camera. Again, a little weird to do one handed. Now, a couple things to note. This case might just be a little bit tight. So this bolt here um, didn't want to line up. So I just had to shift the whole case up a little bit and then drive that bolt in there. And it is just fine. By drive, I didn't mean it's, it's definitely threaded properly. Just want to say that. And then of course, putting on your belt sometimes you take the belt off it wants to spring open and it wants to pop off multiple pulleys which means unless you know the correct orientation you might get hung up on that if you haven't replaced your core support like i have you'll have a sticker right here that will show you how to put it back the correct way otherwise that's it okay so real quick we're going to turn the truck on because like i said it used to kind of ride between the o and the r when i had all my things running that's the lights the air, air conditioning and the radio so let's just see what it does now. Check that out. Okay, so the only thing that's on is the radio. Okay, and we're at the M, so then I'm gonna pull the headlights. Still riding the M. Air conditioning, maybe we'll go like max AC. And you know what, let's, let's turn up a little bit. All right, so now, see where we're we're still on the end, but you can see it kind of dipped a little bit. So let's turn everything off. And you can see it's gonna go right back to the end. So you can see just that much going on in here was enough to dip even the new alternator. So you can only imagine what it does to the 95 amp G3. So of course you all wanna know, where did I get this thing? So I bought it from Rock Auto. If you look up your model, your truck um, within this category, so I'm a 95 F-150, you go down the list, you'll notice one of them will stick out to you as a 130 amp alternator. It's right there. And actually I didn't think it was that expensive. I don't know the number off the top of my head, but I will give you the link down in the description. Otherwise, that's all for me guys. Great little upgrade here. And you see, very, very simple. Another thing to note, if you get a squeak, from your belt. You may have to go down a size belt and that's just a matter of measuring it, going to the auto parts store and putting that on. So that's probably the only other thing, as well as if you decide to start pulling more amperage, you may wanna consider upgrading the charging cable to the battery.
Otherwise, that's all for me, guys. Hit the subscribe icon over here. Check out some of my other videos. I'm Stevie from the Minute Masters. Thanks for watching.